Did you know that The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien has another title? On the inside cover of my copy, it says The Hobbit or There and Back Again. There and Back Again. It's a pretty unassuming title for an epic adventure involving elf lords and kidnap and dragons and battles and a trip halfway across the country, which transforms the world in which it's set. It's a pretty unassuming title for a story that leaves the main character so transformed. Bilbo the Hobbit, for whom the book is named, is almost unrecognisable at the end of the story. So much has happened to him that the way he thinks and acts and responds has completely changed. There and back again. Just the story of a little journey. There and back again which changes everything for Bilbo and reshapes his world. I've been thinking a lot over the last two weeks about journeys and about what a wonderful metaphor they are for our faith. Our church leadership team meets to pray every Monday and last week as we prayed, I had an image of a group of people walking through the thick jungle. It was hard going and the only thing that made it possible to walk through, to keep moving forward, was the fact that there was someone at the front of the group with a machete, hacking at the undergrowth, forging a path. Which is wonderful, but it means that it's that person, the person at the front, who decides which way everyone's going to go. Whichever route they hack is the route that you all follow. You have to follow where they lead or you might end up lost or trapped in the jungle. And this is what I think it's like to follow Jesus. We don't get to choose the destination. That's his decision. Our only choice is whether to keep following or not. There is more to the Christian journey than that, though. Just like the Bilbo in The Hobbit, we don't go on this journey alone. There are others who are following Christ alongside us. Now, Bilbo didn't really like his travelling companions too much at the start of the journey, and we might find some of those that God has put us with a little difficult too. But by the end, they were firm friends. They had helped each other overcome obstacles. They had encouraged each other. They made it through together. And we should do the same on our journey of faith. We should expect our journey of faith following Jesus together to be hard at times. We should expect to need one another's support and care to help each other through the jungle. And we should expect to come back from our little trip changed, different to when we set out. Sometimes we can start to think that the Christian faith is all about the destination and forget about the importance of the journey. But our Bibles are almost all about the journey, the way in which we go together as followers of Jesus. One of our values here at Whitley Bay Baptist Church is discipleship. We believe that we are called to grow together as we learn more about our faith and become more like Jesus. We are called to equip and enable every person in our church family from the youngest to the oldest to explore their gifts and serve among us. As we journey together, we are supposed to help one another become more like Jesus to help shape each other, to encourage each other, to spur each other on so that we can all follow him more closely. I wonder what you might do to help disciple others, to help them as you follow Jesus together. I wonder what the next step of your discipleship journey might be. And if there's something I can do to help on that journey, I would love you to let me know.